Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up this week, cycling loses one of its greats. We pay tribute to Raymond Pulidor, who passed away last week at the age of 83. Plus, the cyclocross season continues at full speed with the latest rounds of the UCI World Cup in Tabor on Saturday and the Flandrian Cross in Hammer yesterday. We also wrap up all the latest transfer and retirement news. <laughs> Last Wednesday, we awoke to the news that French cycling legend Raymond Poulidor had passed away at the age of 83. The child of farmers Raymond was born in 1936. Like many stories of that era, he was given a bike by a local bike shop owner and started winning races early on. After his compulsory national service, he returned to racing and turned pro in 1960. It was his results at the Tour de France that earned him the eternal second nickname. He finished on the podium eight times in total and won seven stages, but he never won overall. And in fact, he never even got to wear the Maillot Jaune. But when you look at his Palmares, that nickname is quite unfair. He won a huge number of races, such as Milan San Remo and only his second pro season, Paris Nice, Flesh Wallon, the national championships three times, and the 1964 Vuelta Espana, amongst many others. He also finished in the top 10 of a Grand Tour on 15 occasions. He raced in the colours of Mercia, and it was his bitter rivalry with Jacques Anquetil, you could say, was the making of his lifelong popularity. A farmer's son, softly spoken, as opposed to the coiffured San Rafael man, it seemed the more he lost, the more popular he became. When Anquetil retired, however, he then came up against a new phenomenon, Eddie Merckx. He finished third in his final Tour de France in 1976 behind Lucien van Impe before retiring from racing in 1977 after an incredible 18 years with Mercier. Now that's loyalty for you when you look at modern sport. It's quite unusual, but incredibly refreshing. After his racing career, Poulidor became a regular at pro races such as the Tour de France due to his links to many sponsors. He has been, in recent years of course, very visible due to his grandsons David and Mathieu van der Poel, who clearly adored their grandfather. The outpouring of love on social media from all who knew him clearly gives you a measure of his popularity. He was a true legend of the sport and he will be sorely missed. We at GCM would like to pass on our condolences, love and best wishes to Monsieur Poulidor's family and friends. Given the news, it could have gone either way for Van der Poel at the weekend. On Saturday in Tabor in the Czech Republic, he had to start on the third row of the grid as it was his first World Cup of the season. It set up an exciting race as Eli Isabit, Michael Van Tournout and Lars Van der Haar pressed on in the front. It took Van der Poel until midway point in the race to make contact with the front group. And even then, it was no formality. Van der Haar was flying. Van Tournout and Isabit were playing the team card. However, on the final half a lap, Van der Poel's strength shone through and he came to the line with a handful of seconds clear of World Cup leader Isabit. Although, in a show of respect to his grandfather, he didn't celebrate. I particularly loved his tweet post-race too. In the women's race, Anna Marie Verse was back on form, taking her second World Cup win on the trot after a close fought battle with compatriots Celine Del Calme and Alvarado. In fact, it was an all Dutch podium with newly crowned European champion Yara Kastelein in third. Average age of the podium, just 23. In fact, according to Cyclocross24 on Twitter, the average age of the top 10 was just 23 years and 205 days, the youngest ever. This was helped by the fact that two juniors, Puck Peterson and Sheeran Van Anroy, finished 9th and 10th respectively. They were born in 2002, which is scary, particularly at my age. This is how the World Cup standings look after four rounds of nine. Isabit has increased his advantage to 45 points over Tonarts with Van Turen out a further 27 points behind. Katarina Nash managed to retain her overall lead despite only finishing 18th, while Magali Rochette remains second. Caitlin Keogh is now third, 39 points off the lead. The next round of the World Cup will be in Coxsider this coming Sunday, and it's one of my favorite courses, so make sure you don't miss out on that one. We'll have it live to certain countries in Europe. The following day saw the second round of the DVB trophy take place in Hummer. Anna Reverse made it a perfect weekend by taking out the women's race. Sana Kant had one of her best races of the season so far by finishing in the runner-up position just three seconds back while Alvarado took third. Jan Hermsen caught up with Sana and Anna Marie post-race. 
Yeah, I think every week the Dutch girls are really strong. And also you saw it yesterday in the World Cup. Uh, also, I think the first four girls were Dutch women, so we are strong uh, this year. The, the youngsters are doing really good at the moment, but uh, at the end of the season, Sonnenkant always becomes world champion. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> That's something what we always think in Holland. <laughs> I hope uh, it's true. Uh, I'm going to try it, but... Uh, Three times uh, in a row, it was uh, quite spectacular. So uh, four times, uh, it will be uh, yeah next level, I think. It was also back-to-back -back wins for Van der Poel, but it was another really close battle. It was Tone Arts who was pushing in close in the early stages, but he slipped back after a mechanical step forward. Laurence Swake, who was never more than a few seconds back. Van der Poel did cross the line first, marking his 31st cyclocross victory in a row. But despite winning everything he's entered this season, he hasn't quite been as dominant so far this year as he was in the last. Could we see someone get the better of him over the next few weeks? It doesn't seem out of the realms of possibility. But if you think he's just cruising to these victories, Matthew certainly knows he's in a race. Yeah, I, I don't know if dominance is the right word. It's uh, I have to work hard for it. Um, last year, uh, I think I was in a, in a better shape this period. But yeah, I've uh, had a very busy summer as well with some mountain biking and road cycling. So it's kind of normal that I have to take my time to get back in top shape. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what he's like when he feels he's finally on tip top shape. It seems a long time ago already that we showed live coverage of the Rectivit Cross in Neil. There, last Monday, Lucinda Brand and Vanderpool took the wins. But what was really interesting was the viewing figures for the two races on Belgian TV. For the first time ever, there were more viewers for the women's race than the men's. 577,000 to 561,000. And I, for one, am not surprised. The women's racing has been far closer with far less predictable winners than the men's racing, which has been dominated by Vanderpool for some time now. Before we finish with that race, we've got a new segment for you, GCN's Fan of the Week. And we've got a double whammy to start things off. Take a look at this guy, who decided to take a rusty old ironing board to a race. Maybe he was maybe looking to rival the press or just iron a few things out. I'm sorry. And maybe then this gentleman who attempted the mud back in Neil with a Tiger onesie and a B-twin with some very skinny tyres. The Tiger of Flanders. Fair play, sir. If you see anything out there, such as these two examples, and catch them on video, we'd love to see them. You can upload them directly to the GCN app, or alternatively, use our uploader, a link which you can find in the description below. The EKZ Cross Tour in Switzerland headed to Hitnup Castle for round three. Nasty weather made the course spectacular for both riders and spectators alike. German champion Marcel Meissen made his mark on the men's race and recorded a record-breaking fifth victory, beating Frenchman Francis Moray's previous best of four, and his, of course. In the women's race, fast starter Christine Majerus, according to the organizers, took off like a fire engine. This is the Luxembourg champion style and in similar fashion to Meissen, just said about putting time into her rivals, finishing in a minute and a half clear of Francis Marlena Petit and German champion Elizabeth Brandau. Before we move on, you may have noticed that I'm wearing some brand new clothing. This is from our new Black Friday range, which is on sale now over on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, a link to which you should be able to see on the screen right now, and you know how much I love a hoodie. Also in the range is this t-shirt, thank you, and some new fan kit, which I particularly love. Unfortunately, we did have a few technical difficulties with our website over the weekend, so for those of you who had trouble ordering, please accept our sincere apologies we have now resolved the problem now in other news yet another big name rider has confirmed his participation at next year's Giro d'Italia Roman Bardet the Frenchman has never competed there before having almost exclusively focused on the Tour de France but he adds his name to a growing list of star riders including Peter Sagan Vincenzo Nibli Jakob Fulsang and possibly Geraint Thomas too the one Grand Tour that hasn't yet confirmed its route for 2020 is the Vuelta a España. The official announcement will not come until the 17th of December, but there are some rumours circulating that it could yet again visit France and take in the Col de Tourmalet in the Pyrenees. This came from French newspaper La Depeche. At the Ghent sixth day, it was local favourites Kenny De Kettle and Robbie Heese who took the win in what came down to a nail-biting finish. It was the final sprint in the Madison 
which is the final event of the six days, with De Ketteler getting the better of Jasper de Burst, who, with teammate Tosh van der Sander, had to settle for second overall. Meanwhile, Marosolt and Broggio has been handed yet another ban, this time a three-month sanction for competing in a small fixed gear criterium in Italy. Sant'Ambrogio didn't declare his previous misdemeanours and he therefore shouldn't have been eligible to compete. Some transfer news now, and first up, AG2I have completed their 2020 lineup with young Brit Harry Tanfield. Tanfield signed his first pro contract with Katusha this time last year, and despite having another year to run on his contract, he was free to move after the merger between Katusha and the Israel Cycling Academy. Johannes Frölinger has called an end to his career after 13 years as a pro, the last nine of which have been with Team Sunweb in its various incarnations. The German spent most of his time as a team captain on the road riding for his team leaders. Sam de Moulin, who has had an even longer career, 18 as a pro, is also calling it a day. The Frenchman's biggest win came at the Tour de France where he won stage eight in 2003. The 39-year-old will now become a sport director at the B&B Hotel's Vital Concept team. Barry Merida have added two young Neo pros, 20-year-old Brit Fred Wright, who won a stage in both the Tour de l'Avenir and the Baby Giro this year. Also, 20-year-old Colombian Santiago Butrago Sanchez. Finally, Lotto Sudal ladies have added to their roster Abby Mae Parkinson, who has been riding with the Drops Pro Cycling team for the last three years. Coming up next week, we'll be looking back at the next round of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup in Kokscheider. In the meantime, if you'd like to see some of the most controversial moments of the 2019 road season, Cy and Dan go through them in a video, which you can find down here. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.